peace to all my Muslims out there worldwide. I pray that Allah blesses us with insight, with knowledge, with wisdom, with patience, and with love. I mean, being born Muslim is not an advantage, and it's not a disadvantage. I would say being born Muslim is more of a responsibility to yourself and to your own soul, first and foremost. You are given this this huge gift and you are required to take it. You are required to cultivate it and you are required to be buried with it your whole life. So it's nothing to take lightly. I used to live right next door to this huge building. And for me, it felt like I lived next door to a huge wall because the building was, was, was so big. All I saw was this great mass of wall that went up and up and up till I couldn't see anymore. And it wasn't until I went off to college and I came back and I was driving back to my house that I grew up in that I saw exactly how big this building was. And I was amazed. And that analogy represents my relationship with Islam. That building represented the religion. And it wasn't until I got away from it that I noticed how big of a, a humongous blessing that I had and that I had been living with uh, my whole life. I just didn't know how big it was. My dad was a convert, so he went through all of the things that converts go through. Uh, he changed his last name. He was rejected by his family. His mother still cooked pork when he came over, and she couldn't see why he would, he would switch his, his religion. He wasn't accepted. Uh, he was shunned and he still held fast and eventually he won his mother over eventually he won his family members over through patience and consistency so I always admired my dad for that and in tune I, I admire every convert just for their, their bravery I could never imagine converting just because I was born with the with the absolute truth. So I would compare it almost to being born with a million dollars. Somebody who's born that rich could never you know, um, understand what poverty feels like. So. I could never um, imagine how it felt to be spiritually starved to the point where you know something else is out there and you had to go get it, you know? And um, I always thanked a lot for that. So with these humongous blessings, you run the risk of the religion being this ceremonial thing. You say assalamu alaikum because you've always said assalamu alaikum. You go to Juma because you've always went to Juma. This is where you went on Fridays. Uh, you didn't eat pork because you've never eaten pork. So then you start having questions about these things, but you're scared to ask in fear that somebody will say, you were born Muslim. You were supposed to know the answer to these questions. Why are you asking these questions? Or they ask you a question 
and they expect you to know the answer to it because you were born Muslim. So you end up being stuck in this box. So what do you do? One of the things is just take a big heaping scoop of humility. That's one of the things that, that the religion was, was, was founded upon. We all have to be humble. We're all servants. Servants have to humble themselves before they can serve somebody. That's deeply ingrained in who we are. And you have to go back. Just like Moses, before he got knowledge from the wise man, he had to go back, physically go back and get the fish that he forgot. He had to humble himself in order to, to, to get wisdom from the wise man in the first place. As born Muslims, we are faced with those same challenges. We have to get off of our horses. And a lot of times we have to start from the beginning. It was so freeing for me to break those chains. Break those chains and just and just come out and admit that I did not know. I don't know who the, 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 the Sahabas are or what a Sahaba is. I hear people talking about it all the time, but I personally don't know. What's the difference between the Hadith and the Sunnah? I, I had no clue. What does SubhanAllah mean? And how do you spell it? Basic things, basic principles of, of Islam. I, glazed over some kind of way. They were lost in my life. And it wasn't until I just got back to the ABCs of the religion and, and learned everything from the start that I, I really started to grow. Dear believers, I never fully tasted the sweetness of Islam until I figured out why I was a Muslim. And I pray that we all get to that point. I pray that just like any torch bearer, once you get that baton, you will run all the way to the end until it's time to pass that thing off. And that baton is our religion. It's our relationship with Allah. We are given it when we are born. Will we keep it until we, we pass away? That's the great responsibility that I'm talking about. I pray that we all find our purpose. I pray that our search for knowledge, wisdom, and understanding eventually leads us to the place that we want to be. And I pray that as we live, every day we strive to perfect our religion. We strive to, to be, to live as Muslims so we can inshallah die as Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. An opportunity not to be missed. Let's illuminate our hearts through this beautiful journey. 16th of March in central London. Book your tickets now online lightuponlight.info.